Welcome back to our three-part series on the evolution of astronomy. Last time on Feed My Curiosity, we looked at the very beginnings of astronomy and how we started studying the subject, from our ancestors living during the Middle Paleolithic period to the Mayans and the kind of influence they have had on how we study astronomy today. We looked at the accomplishments made by pioneers such as Aristarchus, Galileo Galilei, Johannes Kepler, and Isaac Newton. So what has happened with astronomy since? That's what we're going to talk about next with the second chapter, Modern Astronomy and Space Travel, right here on Feed My Curiosity. If you're enjoying what you're watching so far, hit the like and subscribe button to stay up to date with us. Perhaps the most important set of theories discovered in the 20th century was Albert Einstein's special and general theories of relativity. They have guided the way we understand and study theoretical physics in the universe. The theory of relativity basically explains that everything, with the exception of the speed of light, is relative to each other. Depending on our position as an observer, the way we observe something will always be different. The Earth is spinning at about a thousand miles an hour, but because we're standing or sitting on this planet, we don't notice or feel it. But astronauts in space looking down on the planet would be able to see its rotation. Here's another example. Let's say you're sitting in your car and you wave at a friend as you drive by. In their perspective, they see you in the car speeding away into the horizon. But in your perspective, you see your friend moving away into the distance while the car you're sitting in doesn't move away from you. The theory of relativity also explains a variety of time dilation effects. The gravitational time dilation explains that the higher you are, the faster time passes by. Time is slower the closer you are to a massive object like Earth because its gravity bends space and time. So those astronauts in space looking down at Earth they would see time on Earth passing by more slowly. There's also a thing called relative velocity time dilation, which explains the faster you move, the slower time moves. Now don't take this information and think you can save time by speeding your way to work. Stay safe on the roads. Now we won't get into any more detail on how much weirder the theory of relativity gets, especially when you take into account what happens when gravitational time dilation and relative velocity time dilation happens at the same time. The point we just want to make is that the theory of relativity has had a big impact on our understanding of astronomy and how we study things in space. As the years go by, technology becomes more sophisticated and we become more creative in how we study astronomy. As you can see, we are now at the point where we can study the universe firsthand. We're sending people into space, rovers on Mars, and we have big telescopes in space like the Hubble and soon to be James Webb Telescope to send us pictures of thousands of beautiful galaxies and nebulas. But how did we reach this point? How exactly did the age of rockets all begin? Let's rewind back a bit to the year of 1857, 11 years after Johann Galle discovered Neptune, 15 years after Christian Doppler discovered the Doppler effect, and 56 years after Giuseppe Piazzi discovered the first dwarf planet, Ceres. 1857 was also the year Russian rocket scientist Kostanin Tuskovsky was born. He is one of the most important figures in astronomy because if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have explored space with rockets the way we do today. During his early years, while he attempted to write science fiction, he wondered how humans would be able to go into space and make a living. And no such technology existed then. In 1883, he published an article about living in space. And in 1894, he published an article about an aerodynamically advanced metal aircraft. In 1903, he published a manuscript which was one of the most scientifically viable proposals to use rockets for humans to enter space. Tchaikovsky proposed using a fuel mix of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. And years later, in 1926, Robert Goddard launched a rocket which used liquid fuel. He was able to conclude that it was more efficient than solid fuel. Tchaikovsky's rocket formula takes into account the changing mass of a rocket as it burns fuel, the velocity of the exhaust gases, and the rocket's totaling speed. This formula is believed to be the foundation of astronautics. In 1926, Tchaikovsky published a program which outlines the way humans can move into the universe. He proposed the use of rocket-powered airplanes, plants for life support, and solar radiation for food growth and energy. And in 1929, he published an article on multi-stage rockets. As a rocket's fuel was consumed, it would break away from the main rocket. Tchaikovsky passed away in 1935, but his legacy lived on. NASA's space shuttles, the first reusable spacecraft, 
uses multi-stage rockets to boost astronauts into space and uses the same fuel mix of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen that Tuskovsky drew up. With all that research and dedication put into early rocket science studies, people today could study space up close in many imaginable ways possible. In 1957, the Russian Sputnik program launched the first ever artificial satellite to complete an orbit around the Earth. Within the same year, they launched a second Sputnik satellite, which the Russians used to study the biological effects on a dog. Meanwhile, the Americans, who were going at it with the Russians during the Cold War, stood up and said we can explore space too. Dwight D. Eisenhower's government made space exploration a priority, and in 1958, they launched the first ever American satellite to orbit Earth, which was called the Explorer. It was used to measure space temperature and micrometeorite impacts on the atmosphere. The Russian versus American space race didn't stop there. Yuri Gagarin entered space for the first time in human history in 1961. A year later, John Glenn became the first American to orbit Earth. In 1966, Russia's Lunar 9 and American Surveyor 1 successfully soft landed on the moon, and Lunar 9 transmitted the first lunar photographs back to Earth. Then, in 1969, the Apollo 11 mission featuring Commander Neil Armstrong, Command Module Pilot Michael Collins, and Lunar Module Pilot Edwin Buzz Aldrin successfully landed on the moon. Something Robert Goddard always thought possible, and something John F. Kennedy wanted to accomplish since 1961. On the day of July 20th, Neil Armstrong spoke the words that would be echoed and quoted for many years to come. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. People grew more and more confident in launching rockets and satellites into space to conduct research and gather data, and they were going further each time. Russia and America were successfully sending probes and satellites to Mars, Venus, Mercury, Saturn, Jupiter, and Uranus. America's pioneer was even able to make it to the outskirts of the solar system, studying the solar wind and the incoming cosmic rays. People were also taking the initiative of setting up space stations, in 1971, the first space station was launched, Russia's Salyut 1. The first crew arrived shortly afterwards. It flew in low orbit for 175 days before intentionally crashing into the Pacific Ocean. And in 1984, Ronald Reagan gives the green light for the International Space Station, the ISS's first segment launched in 1998, and the first crew arrived late 2000. Then in the year 1990, the Hubble Space Telescope was launched into space by NASA's Discovery Shuttle. Since it became active, it gave us Earthlings some of the prettiest photos of the universe, like the Pillars of Creation and the Cat's Eye Nebula. It even gifted us with the Hubble Deep Fields, containing interesting looking galaxies that are believed to have originated from the earlier days of the universe, 500 million years after the Big Bang. Space exploration didn't come without its challenges, however, including Apollo 1 in 1967, the Soyuz 11 in 1971, Challenger in 1986, and Columbia in 2003. Despite these tragedies, people were able to learn about what went wrong, and they took the necessary steps to implement safer protocols for future space space travels. Since 2011, all of NASA's space shuttle missions were completed, and NASA currently depends on Russia's Soyuz to travel to and from the International Space Station. Boeing and SpaceX are hopeful to be the next ones to carry the torch and bring people to space. So what does the future of astronomy hold? What are some of the mysteries of the universe that are yet to be solved? Where do we want to travel next? This is what we'll look at next time on Feed My Curiosity. If you know of any other accomplishments made in space exploration or discoveries made since Einstein's theory of relativity, or have any other comments, why not post below? And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Feed My Curiosity.